in these bull markets, it is very unlikely that you see more than three in a row that are basically in an uncertain trend or down. Hello everyone, Jason Pizzino shares his latest Bitcoin outlook. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Now look at the fear and greed index is also sitting in greed for the S&P 500. We have seen a flush out here through uh, August, uh, Jul yeah, July, August, and then also in September again, plenty of different reasons why we had to get a recession. Obviously, we've seen the Middle East conflicts. We've seen the yen carry trade problems. We've seen so many different things. Meanwhile, the markets have continued to go up or at least pause to consolidate for that bad news. Now, on that, we also looked at the possibility of a volatile October, but seeing as we've had a volatile July and August and September, maybe we're trying to process and digest the moves that we've seen through that period and that period. And now October might not be as volatile as those moves. If you're not watching a chart, it might feel and sound like it's more volatile. But when you look at a price chart, you can see here from the 1st of October, the market really has gone nowhere. Doesn't mean it won't continue. Maybe it could go further. But in terms of these significant falls, uh, maybe we've used those significant falls up. And so I want to show you this red line here, which is from our October market performance, looking at the last uh, 21 years and also election years over the last 70 years. And all I've done is put a red line for this particular swing down and back up. So basically a down and up, down and an up. Uh, you can see on the SP 500, it might look something like that, maybe down to the 56, maybe back up to 57 or 58 by the end of October. And at the end of the day, I could be completely wrong. And this could be way stronger than many of us expect front running an election uh, outcome or an election result that just shoots this thing off within quarter four. So if we take a look at some of the other items that I've looked at on the channel. We've got October volatility, just explain that. Maybe it's not going to be as volatile, volatile as those previous months. Four to five week volume fill, just looking at the price action itself and the possibility of it getting filled back to the strongest volume. And those strongest volume days started somewhere around here. So we could see a bit of a drop off, which lines up with the October movement as well. So from this one here, that bit of a roadmap, and then coming out to the end of the month to push higher from that point. Essentially, I'm just looking at how the market might have got a little bit ahead of itself and then comes back to fill in that volume with more interested buyers stepping in at uh, significant levels or levels that they find significant. That could take us out to the end of the month. So that's what I said here, four to five week volume fill. Now, October 1st, it was a red day, quarter four likely to be green. And again, something else that we were, we were following. So let's see how that pans out over the coming few months. So other big things that have been going on, which I think is going to be very effective for Bitcoin and cryptos and a bit of a curse to bears or anyone really hoping for lower prices on Bitcoin. I think it's going to be a very bad idea to hope that Bitcoin gets under um, sort of those previous lows of August and September. Other reasons being is that we're seeing more strength in the stock market in China after they talked about pumping more money into their system. I've given timeframes of how long I think this move could potentially last, just going back to China's entire uh, history here on the chart. We're following the 14 months first, then the 25 months, then the 29 months. And China has essentially done in four and a half-ish weeks, nearly 50% on the stock market. There is the low, there's the high at about 48%, uh, obviously currently sitting at 34%, but it's been an absolute monster gain breaking 50% and now coming up to test some of the more significant monthly uh, swing tops. So keep an eye out for that over the coming months as well as more money floods into the system into this last final winner's curse phase of the peak. Winner's curse essentially means everyone is or should be making money because the markets are going up and the curse is they think they're going to do it forever. That happens every single time. So try not to get caught in the curse. I'll do my best not to get caught in the curse either. The US dollar 
is uh, showing some strength here. Now, I thought I'd bring this up because we've been tracking it. it uh, if it shows strength, often that puts a little bit of pressure onto other assets. We're seeing a little bit of that with BTC, obviously getting rejected on the short term here, getting all the way up to 64,500, slam back down to 62. Reasonable volume here. So as long as it holds out, it could climb a little bit higher. But before I get too far ahead on the big Bitcoin analysis, the US dollar has shown one of our infamous signals here, exclusive to the investor accelerator. If you know how to use this signal, it can make you a absolute plethora of gains, understanding these turns. More importantly, it'll allow you to read the market with far more confidence. If you want to learn about that, links are down in the video description, the TI premium membership, looking at this three day rule, knowing when to use it. People try to use it too often, but it's very particular. And if you get it right, it is going to help out a hell of a lot. Now, the rule here is looking at days that are up, higher highs, higher lows from significant turning points. Could be a high, it could be a low. In this case, we have a significant low come in on the 18th and again on the 27th. So basically a double bottom here, and then it has fired away from that point. Green arrows to the upside from that low point three times in a row. TIA three day rule there. Now, this rule works fantastically well on the US dollar, which then allows us to identify maybe Bitcoin might show a little bit of pause, you know, uh, consolidation or stability. Or if it is going up in this case, maybe Bitcoin will show some weakness. If it is going down, the US dollar that is, maybe Bitcoin will show some strength. So that's how we are able to read it here. Now, in each of these pretty significant lows, which what, what I'm calling very significant lows. I'm looking at the, the previous history. It's been many months before those levels were broken and the new lows were set. You can see the rule happen again, green, green, green. It fired on the third day. And then this low here in uh, November, uh, December, 2023 was not broken until now, until September of, of 2024. So a nine, 10 month uh, window there for this rule that signaled you got a peak and then the market's basically taken nine and a half months to come and break that significant low. So to me, that is a significant low. It happened again in July, 2023, very significant low, ran it all the way up to the 50%. Again, the rule signaled here, it ran up. It was getting, uh, it was a pretty weak rally, but it didn't break that low until April of that same year. And then again, going back uh, to January, 2021, the rule again showed the exact low of this downtrend. That's what this white arrow is here. Three days up, bam, bam, bam. And then you didn't see the market go below that low for that entire run. We haven't gone below that particular low now for coming up to um, four years. All right. And that brought in that final bull market top. So on to the major shocking charts here. I'm going to start with the larger time frames and just show, or at least using history, how very unlikely it is for Bitcoin to break down from significant lows and to not get your hopes up that we're going to see these uh, big pullbacks, right? So the first chart I've got here is the quarterly chart in the previous cycles. Here is the previous cycle, um, then the cycle before that, and then the cycle before that again. So looking at the quarters themselves with our GAN swing indicator on showing us what the bars were. So the greens are high highs, higher lows. The gray dots are basically lower highs and higher lows. So they are contained within the previous bars price data. And then the red are lower highs and lower lows. If there is a blue, there is one right there. It has a higher high and a lower low. So basically an outside bar that has a big range. So in these bull markets, it is very unlikely that you see more than three in a row that are basically in an uncertain trend or down. The only time we got that was last cycle with COVID and without COVID, it probably would have been stable and probably heading up there with a the green, but it's there. So we have to use that data point. Looking at the previous cycle to that, you had a gray and a blue, and then it was basically up from there. Green, just digesting the move, another green digesting the move, and then away it went to that peak. So it was one, two, three, four, five quarters. So that was after um, the first six quarters. Okay, so from the low to the last time it was undecided here. So there's the gray, six quarters, and then it went ballistic for five quarters. 
So let's have a look at six quarters here. That takes you out to that gray peak there. So there's your six quarters right there. And then it basically went ballistic for one, two, three, call that a peak into the fourth, a gray, and then the final peak there. And then the cycle before that, six quarters. Um, for reasons we've talked about before, I'm using the October low. There's the peak. And then six quarters takes you out to that particular gray dot. You had a green, a gray, green, green, gray, green. So the grays aren't the worst. It's been a, it was a huge move to the upside. It had to digest and then continued to take off from that point as well. Here we find ourselves with many green quarters in a row. It didn't feel like it at the time, mind you. Who would have thought 2023 was all up from there? No lower lows in the quarterly chart. But now we find ourselves with um, uh, three quarters of indecision. We're not finished this quarter yet, so quarter four of 2024. But if we just take a look at that, where's six take us? Well, it takes us to this bar here. And in this case, we had the red there. So history would suggest that it's highly unlikely, not impossible, but highly unlikely that we're going to see a breakdown of the, um, of the previous quarter from this point. And it's more likely we would see higher prices from this point. And uh, on top of that higher prices, it's probably going to be pretty ballistic. They were the ballistic quarters after the uh, indecision and digesting of the moves and the news and the narratives and all of the possibility that the world was going to end. Remember, we did have COVID in here and we had many other reasons why the world was going to end there. We also had many reasons in 2018 while um, you had this bear market, while the world was going to end there as well. And then again, going all the way back to uh, you had the 2015 stock market corrections as well that lasted all year. So many reasons why the market should have continued to go down and crash a, a very long bull market. It didn't happen and basically skyrocketed from that point. So that's case number one. Do we need more cases for everyone? Well, why not? Let's have a look at those right now. And I just want to take a step back to the timeframes now for the election and where we currently sit. So that's uh, this particular chart right here. So the election is this gray line and we'll look at four weeks prior to the election, four weeks after the election and what this could mean for the price of BTC. And of course, that also goes for um, cryptocurrencies as well. Bitcoin would, would run and then likely um, cryptos to follow. So gray, gray line election, four weeks, four weeks after. That's where we currently sit. So let's take a look back to 2020. Now I'm going to just use the measurements here for the, the previous moves and looking at where the correction is or where the price is and whether it has gone lower than the previous price action. So essentially we're in October, did the price go lower than um, the September and the August price ranges after the current point that we are in? So is there a chance that we would see lower prices from here, significantly lower prices that would warrant staying out of the market, waiting for bigger corrections, or is it better just to have your plan and start to execute on that right now if the prices remain where they are or if they go higher? So something actionable that you can take away from the video. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Jason Pizzino. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.